Darn. Sorry, I'm still wrapping my head around that. Earlier in the show, we looked at the range of monitors we wanted to use with Augen. We set on the, this right over here, this NEC, this multi sig LCD, 21-inch gorgeous LCD screen. Next week, we're going to talk about the benchmarks. But you know what? You want good benchmarks? You're going to have to fine-tune and tweak your system. you got to squeeze every last bit of power out of it. Robert Heron here knows everything about oh, tweaking man. systems. You're in from the Tech TV Labs. <laughs> Welcome back, dude. Thank you. So this is like... You know, we should tell folks, you, you should be getting some props, because Intel Developers Forum this week, you sat in in one of the seminars. Yeah. It was you and, like, 19 people who do nothing but engineer systems for a living. The challenge was to tweak the BIOS settings oh, on a right. system to see who can get the highest frame rate on a benchmark. Yeah, we had a quick three and about, yeah, probably about 40 people in the room on mm -hmm. about 20 different computers. And uh, the final project was, he started off with an initial benchmark of Quake 3, and then we just kept doing tweaks, seeing what the result was, do some more tweaks, try the result. And my group one. Very nice. That's, Six, a, that's a pretty good accomplishment. Almost 630 frames per second. <laughs> Which is probably for whatever that's worth anybody. Yeah. They're yeah. probably like running Quake Talks 3, 640 by 480. Yeah, exactly. So they're basically they were throttling it on the. It was uh, mainly a CPU process we were looking at. So. It's a good thing, but you know what? What happens if you don't? If you basically don't configure your BIOS co correctly? You're probably losing anywhere from five to up to about 20 percent of the ultimate power that any particular configuration is capable of. What's the, I mean, what's the number one mistake people make by not going into their BIOS? What should they adjust first? For, especially for people who build their own machines, odds are if you buy one from a major manufacturer, mm -hmm. they've gone through the BIOS and done most of it, hopefully. Right. If not, the things that you can really tweak improve everything from speeding up the process of when you first hit the power button mm -hmm. to the moment you get the window screen. Other things include memory timings and CPU timings, as well as disabling things you don't use. So if we like tweaking here in the first boot device, second boot device, this is the classic stuff for startup. Right. If you don't ever want to boot from anything other than your hard drive, you know what, you can take those out of the process. What about some of the stuff that's going into, oh, I don't know. Before you do anything, uh -huh. kick back to the first menu here. The very first thing you want to do whenever you, A, download the latest BIOS, flash the computer with that. Okay. And if you're not comfortable with that, be very careful about doing it. Otherwise, you load the optimized defaults. There's usually a fail-safe default, which is the ultimate safe setting. Then you have the optimized default or the uh, turbo default or whatever you want okay. to call it. Start with that first because that will go through every one of the settings. And the guys who built the motherboard, mm -hmm. basically, they put their things. You know what? If you want the best performance, here are the settings we went with. That's essentially what you're loading up. And then you go back and through each one and tweak from there. What do you recommend for learning? Because I know, okay, it's like, okay, I need primary master, it's my hard drive, it's my second hard Believe drive. Believe it or not, most of the stuff drives. on here you don't have to touch. It's really a few things, like if you didn't have a floppy drive, right. disable it. If you're not going to use the parallel ports, serial ports, turn those off as well. And basically it's, it's and a then, long process of sliding through there. Yes, and for the most part you'll see a page like this where you have integrated devices and things like that. Essentially if you need it, leave it on. If mm -hmm. not, you know, don't worry about it. The other good thing, too, if you're not sure about something, just leave it at the default value. Okay. And it's really hard to remember everything you've done when you change stuff, so you really want to make sure you write down specific changes that you do make. So when you go back, try a couple things, you've got it written down, you know what you did before, you go back and do it again, especially when you get into memory timings and right. CPU settings, because... <laughs> It can get pretty confusing when you've tried 10 different settings trying to find the best one. You know, we talk about this a lot in overclocking, something to do, especially yeah. if you're tweaking with memory settings. If you do something, sometimes your system will not restart. This True. is a bad and unfortunate feeling. If you have the manual, don't throw away the manual to your motherboard. There's going to be a jumper on the motherboard. You plug the pin. You basically move it from two pins over here to two pins over here. It'll reset everything on the motherboard. This is a good thing. Now, it's going to undo all of your settings, but it will also allow sure. your system to boot again. We like being able to boot our system. If we can boot our system, then we can go back in and configure everything. Some of the new motherboards also include large amounts of memory for the BIOS as well. Where mm -hmm. It will store additional settings that you've made before. So you can pick, like you've done one that you want to try out, like mm -hmm. a... I don't know what you would call it, like a default BIOS setting, and then you've got the one you just saved from the last configuration. If it didn't work, it would go back to the previous setting. Got it. So it, they've done a lot in terms of making it easier for the end, end user to go ahead and tweak the settings they want in there. Very cool. We should probably talk about driver updates, yeah. the latest drivers. Honestly, the most performance you're going to get out of anything in terms of systems. It's mm -hmm. good to go through the BIOS, good to optimize there, but your software, your mm -hmm. OS, there's a lot to be done in there in terms of just... The updates from the operating system? Yeah. Graphics drivers, whether you download, you know, ATI from ATITech.com or your latest NVIDIA drivers. Definitely. Do you use the beta, or do you wait for, or do you, you hold back on the more solid drivers? Uh, we do lots of system testing, and we only use what they call wickled drivers, uh, WHQL. In your house? Yeah. No, I, your I, never touch, I don't touch beta drivers anymore. Okay. It's like, uh, Too much of a crapshoot? If you have a good enough graphics card, you're really not going to get a whole lot more out of but it. But I can so, get three yeah. more frames per second! <laughs> 
I'd rather have stability day in and day out. Right. I just want to, you know, after a month of messing with it, I, I don't want to mess with it anymore. Right. It's like, I want to hit the power button, it comes on. Now, what about tweaking services? Now, this is where the, the, the road diverges. Yeah. Turn it off access services in, micro, you know, in Microsoft's uh, Windows XP. Or... I say don't touch any of those services. I personally, I, right. I mean, there are both sides of the fence. I'm sure somebody can provide, if somebody can provide me with one example where doing all the service tweaks, eliminating 30% of them that are right. running actually helps performance on it'll a high-end system. It'll help speed your startup. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't believe that. <laughs> the road diverges, yeah. but you know what? We got the messenger. The messenger service. Let's definitely turn screen. that one off. You don't enjoy getting the little gray screen that tells you you can buy stuff for less money. Hey, at least the XP64 uh, turns that off by default. It's so. a good thing, Robert. Good stuff, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a ton of links, a ton of articles up on the website about tweaking Ugum or your ultimate gaming system. We're going to show you Tuesday the Benchmarks Forum. Trust me. Go to screensavers.com. Check out the article. It's good, good stuff. Come up.